I made a vice for the Pocket NC. Getting to this point has been a little bit more of an adventure than I would like to admit. And I wanted to walk you guys through the design and the story behind how I got to this point. While I can and probably will use this vice for many things, this was specifically designed for making our branding irons. I just did a video on our branding irons. So after this video, if you are wondering why I'm making this, maybe go check that out. Work holding on the pocket NC can be kind of a pain. So having something like this makes it much easier. Let's take a look at the CAD so I can walk you through some of my design decisions. All right, first of all, you may notice this little orange thing here. This doesn't actually exist yet. That is a part that I am 3D printing as we speak. This side of the vise right here is designed for two inch material, and this side is designed for three inch material. This little orange part is going to be a stop for the material so that I can reference off that edge when I load a part in. If you look at the top here, you'll notice I have three holes. Uh, two of these holes are for pins and the middle hole is for a quarter 20 screw. The pins just guide the little hat here or the movable side of the jaw and the quarter 20 screw is where the clamping action comes from. The actual movable portion of the jaw extends down past just a, a tad there and that is so that if my stock is undersized, I can still clamp down on it. I have five threaded holes here. These are again quarter 20 on the sides. I have those holes there so I can add accessories like vice stops or I could potentially fixture a part right there on the side. This upright portion of the tombstone is sitting on a aluminum base. This aluminum base was originally laser cut and then I put it on the pocket NC and machined out some of the precision features. So these are M4 locating holes that tie directly into the pocket NC table. Those holes were laser cut in along with the outline of the circle that was all laser cut. On the pocket NC machined in these holes for eighth inch dowels that will provide a precision locating to the table so that I can take this jig on and off. I then have six holes in the bottom. These four holes, one, two, three, four, are uh, clearance holes for a quarter 20 fastener. And these are a press fit for a quarter inch dowel pin. So these two dowel pins locate the tombstone and then the four uh, quarter 20 fasteners actually retain it. A few weeks ago, I made a bunch of blank tombstones with none of the features machined into the upright portion, but the bottom part complete. So when I went to do this, it was easy enough just to grab one of those blanks, stick it on the machine and start machining. So we can go over to cam and I can show you what my toolpaths look like. Basically just a whole lot of facing and then a whole lot of adaptive, cleaning up the sides. Then I clean off the bottom of the two vice jaws, do a finishing pass on these faces. The only faces that matter, remember, are the edge here of the fixed vice jaw and then the face there of the, I guess the body of the vise you'd call it. Then I go through and do a bunch of boring, put a chamfer on everything and then thread mill. Easy enough. Well, it should have been easy enough, but it wasn't. It did not go particularly well. I crashed my machine. This was the original vise that I tried making the first time. Uh, unfortunately, now it is scrap. At some point as it was running, there was a big buildup of chips on the table. And then when it went to move its rotary axis, some of the chips fell in 
the gap on the B table, jamming it up, preventing it from turning. So the tombstone ended up at an angle. The machine didn't know it was off angled, so it was trying to machine it in the wrong place. Eventually, the more it machined, it lost steps and then ended up crashing against the uh, edge of the machine itself. Pretty, I guess not severely damaging it because there was no permanent um, damage to the, the movements of the machine. The kinematics are fine, but pretty heavy uh, aesthetic damage. So after that little snafu, I did a couple things to improve my process reliability. First of all, you may notice that my tombstone here is wearing a skirt. So this is just a foam skirt that I hot glued on. This skirt is wide enough that it keeps chips from working their way into that little gap that can jam up the B axis table. It's simple, but that little skirt did a really good job of keeping the chips out. The next thing I did was teach my pocket NC a little bit of ballet. I added some manual G-code between tool paths that did a lot of material removal. That is just some very simple G-code that turns the table 90 degrees, does a couple rotations, turns it to 130 degrees, does some more rotations, and then keeps going with the part that dumps all of the chips off of the table into the chip pan and makes it less likely to jam. With those changes, the code ran just fine and it popped out a, a basically perfect part. After the upright portion of the tombstone was done, I moved on to making my first version of the movable portion of the vise. This is made out of quarter inch aluminum. It's got two holes there that are uh, bored to be sliding fits on the pins. And then it's got one hole that's a clearance for a quarter 20, basically matching the top of this fixture. I machined this part right on my vice fixture but because i didn't have the top portion of my vice yet i used the super glue and painter's tape work holding and did it right here it worked pretty well i just did it all in one setup went pretty easily i was delighted that that part had been so easy to make so I grabbed a chunk of brass that I have sitting around, put the, the hat on, and clamped it down. That is when I learned it wouldn't clamp. No matter how hard I cranked down on that top screw, I just couldn't get it to bite onto the piece of brass. Now, turns out this brass is 15 thou undersized, and I designed this to accommodate a piece of brass that was 10 thou undersized. Brass extrusion is supposed to be oversized, not undersized, but Mr. Murphy apparently fulfilled my order and you know how it goes. I got some really good advice from quite a few of you guys on Instagram about how to solve the problem. I was originally just gonna do something to fix this one, but figured out that it would be easier just to make a new one. So I made a revision too. This one is bigger and it has these little steps in it that allow it to get down past the sides of the vice body. I cut some quarter inch thick, two inch by two inch aluminum and oversized it this time instead of undersized it so that it would fit using this, uh, this jaw here and cut it 
as the first part that I actually made in this vise. It ended up being a pretty simple part, no crashes this time, and it basically fit perfectly on the first try. I did somehow manage to oversize these holes slightly. I wish that those had been a tighter fit on the pins, but it works perfectly fine. Despite some major mishaps, I now have a functional part. I can make branding irons efficiently, and I look forward to just generally having this around as a tool that I can use. I may make another version of this that instead of accommodating two inch stock and inch and, a, inch and a half stock, I can accommodate like one inch stock and half inch or something like that or three quarters. And that'll just make one off parts much easier in the future. Fixturing is really hard on the pocket NC. There's not a lot of great solutions. So something like this for simple parts just makes things easy. Pens will be back shortly. I have material right here for four new tombstones so that we can get into production mode on the pens. In the near future, we will really be dialing in our design and our manufacturing process on that. And I am super excited for how those are gonna come out. If you wanna buy something that we make like a branding iron, link is in the description. If you don't need a branding iron and you still wanna support us, please go ahead and do all the YouTube things. Like and subscribe, comment below. A whopping 9% of you are subscribed. So if we could get those numbers up, that would be cool. We will have more machining content, more business content, more CAD and CAM and design videos coming up in the future. I will see you next time.